Hi oh, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top and beautiful, spring day in paradise in the end times here in the uh, Point Lonesome Swamp at Crazy Crane Campground. And it is a gorgeous Sunday morning, April 3rd, 2021. And it is my great pleasure and honor to uh, read <clears throat> at least part of the long-awaited and overdue essay. Perhaps, is this Deb Ozarko's, will this turn out to be her, her grand opus? Is that it, or will it turn out to be her final swan song? Uh, I guess... Uh, <laughs> We shall wait and see, but it is my great honor. I don't know when I'm going to actually be publishing this. I am reading this on Sunday, April 4th, 2021. She, she finally wrapped this up yesterday, and um, we will see when I decide to run it. But, uh, you know, I am very proud. It is my it is a great honor of mine to be considered, I guess, a a friend of uh, Deb Ozarko, who understands the corona panic as, and articulates what I have been trying to say about the corona panic and much more poetically than I ever could. So, uh, again... I'm going to put the link on here, and I encourage you to read this entire essay uh, just for the time constraints. I'm pretty much going to read the middle of it, but uh, I highly encourage you to go on this essay and read it yourself. But if you just want me to sit down and uh, read at least the middle of it for you, I will be happy to do that. But i got to put the little dog down. <clears throat> Okay, Deb Ozarko, take it away and talk to us about the great distraction in the final mile. This is from her uh, excellent website where you can find a lot more of her essays. Just debozarko.com. Will this be the last essay we ever see at debozarko.com? Let's hope not. But anyway, for now, the great distraction in the final mile, which she opens up with a quote from Mark Twain, quote, It is easier to fool people than to convince them they have been fooled. Yes, it is, uh, Mark slash... Samuel. So as they say, we are, as much as I would like to read uh, all of the opening salvo of this excellent essay, we're going to start with the word fear because this is an <clears throat> essay more about fear than it is about the corona panic which is what the corona panic is. It is fear. Take it away, Deb Ozarko. Talk to us about fear. <clears throat> fear, especially when catalyzed by corporate science, is virtually impossible to penetrate. It roots itself deep in the psyche and rapidly morphs into dogma. As Robert Anton Wilson once wrote, quote, the obedient always think of themselves as virtuous rather than cowardly, close quote. Many people have become compliant, unrelenting advocates and rigid authorities <clears throat> for delivering the all-pervasive media message du jour, often at the expense of creating greater division. Our distrustful obsession with finger-pointing has eroded our infantile consciousness into nothingness. 
COVID has destroyed the social fabric of what makes up the truth of our humanity. Connection. We cannot perpetuate an illusion about our civilization and each other without perpetuating an illusion about ourselves. Our minds are so profoundly separated that we have become terrified of what we are. Let's hear about the contagion of fear. While I am not disputing the story of a new virus, I am disputing the insane reaction to the story of the virus. In a world that was already polarized, the COVID narrative has provoked a sweeping fear and distrust of each other. Our alienation from the natural world, including our own bodies, has heightened our distrust, powerlessness, and duality. Humanity has become, has become terrified of their own nature, falling prey to media, government, science invoked beliefs that support the ongoing divide between flesh and spirit. When we do not feel safe within ourselves, we can never feel safe in the world. The powers that be know this. A terrified collective is easy to control. The status quo has willingly given their minds away to the prevailing narrative with no questions asked. Very few have developed immunity toward this mad illusion. <clears throat> the psychic contagion of fear, anxiety, and despair travel faster than anything physically spread in the air. As we have already seen, they can pervade a global collective overnight, and that compromised mental state can activate anything. Virus, disease, epidemic, pandemic, social unrest, violence, war, and so much more. When we fear anything, we acknowledge its power to hurt us. Overnight, overnight, uh, where did we, uh, where did my uh, computer go overnight? I guess my, this is the YouTube bots uh, breaking into my computer. <clears throat> overnight, people who once loved and trusted each other became fearful, cautious, and divisive in their beliefs about the prevailing narrative. Love was mangled into meaning something it is not. It became about distancing, isolating, sanitizing, and masking. Our natural humanity of breath and touch now incites fear, revulsion, and a mad panic to sanitize as quickly as possible. Tactile relationships with neighbors, family members, and friends have been digitized to prevent the expression of our natural humanity. The fear and oppression imposed by corporate science, governments, and media have warped our minds, allowing us to rationalize the irrational and normalize the perverse. We have all been infected. This virus shows up in every one of us because it is relational. 
Those who are wedded to the prevailing narrative, though they may not have been infected in a physical sense, have been infected by the all-pervasiveness of it all. COVID has become the greatest virus of the mind to sweep the globe in one fell swoop. As Dan Brown said, quote, only one form of contagion travels faster than a virus, and that is fear, close quote. <clears throat> Strange and strained relationships with family and friends with polarizing views now prevail. The lines between safety and paranoia have been blurred. People we once knew as friends are no more. Fear has infected their minds and poisoned their humanity. They have bought the story with such conviction that it is virtually impossible to connect meaningfully anymore. A mind is so utterly locked down in fear is difficult to penetrate. The hardest part is saying goodbye to once loving relationships with people who are now a fraction of who they once were. In, in many ways, this reality is showing us the true colors of most people, and that true color is fear and all of its derivatives, worry, concern, anxiety, caution, aggression, trepidation, timidity, hesitation, unease, etc. <clears throat> Shirley MacLaine said it well, quote, Fear makes strangers of people who would be friends, close quote. Fear removes us from the truth of what we are. In the removal of that core truth, we are separate. Ironically, most people will deny that they are afraid, but ask them to look into your eyes and hug you, maskless, in their natural humanity, and the truth quickly comes out and the wise words of Jiddu Krishmanurti, quote, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society, close quote. I have always had a simple barometer for the truth. Anything that unifies, connects, harmonizes, creates peace expansion, understanding, compassion, and inspires divine love is real. Anything that separates, isolates, distances, oppresses, constricts, or otherwise causes fear, concern, rigid thinking, worry, panic, or anxiety is a lie. It is not the truth of what we are, period. Humanity has blindly bought into a global lie at the expense of itself. Adolf Hitler knew the power of the big lie as he shared in his autobiography, Mein Kampf, quote, tell a lie so colossal that no one could believe that someone would have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. Close quote. We are eating our own tails, and soon there will be nothing left. So now let's move into fear, the great killer. 
I am blessed to be surrounded by amazing friends with expansive vision and critical thinking skills intact. I cherish these beautiful people along with my animal family who could care less about the insane human dramas of our world, these friends have become my lifeline for love and sanity in an increasingly hostile and insane world. Many new friends have also come into my life, people who have surprised me with their willingness to see beyond the veil of illusion people from all walks of life I would not have normally considered to be such committed visionary allies. In many ways, the true essential nature of people is finally showing. On the flip side, I have also found the need to release a handful of friends who were once dear to me, childhood friends who have since become shadows of who they once were, so steeped in fear of natural body responses, coughing, sneezing, hugs. In many ways, the cult of COVID has won. It has blackened the hearts and altered the minds of so many. Those who have not lost the capacity for self-connection and critical thought now live among ghosts. They are not friendly spirits either. Fear is like that. It constricts, suffocates, and creates rigid thinking. The great irony is that fear is a welcome mat for disease, pain, suffering, anxiety, and even death. There is no vaccine for that. So now let's hear about the pandemic of fear. <clears throat> when refusal to think beyond the bounds of social consciousness dictates com dictates compliance rigidity and fear are only the pos are the only possible outcomes when the fear of the unknown is imposed fear of the unknown is accepted closed mindedness is the result of critical thinking denied to be closed-minded is to be judgmental, masks, no masks, isolation dogma, and vaccine shaming, for instance. Closed-mindedness also denies the possibility of anything existing outside of that which can be experienced beyond the perceptual senses of the body. When we look at our world today, the physical manifestations of this constricted consciousness are everywhere from the dis, from fear disguised as faux politesse to suspicion tattling shaming dirty looks curfews and hoarding to the social distancing, isolating dogma and oppressive rules forbidding freedom of movement and natural expression. There is nothing more terrifying than a human being driven by fear. Trading the freedom of our natural humanity for the unnatural illusion of safety is foolhardy. Toilet paper was only the beginning of the fight over the scraps that will soon remain in the great unraveling in this decade of demise. Let's not forget the immensity of our insanity. 
we are the only species that factory farms and slaughters billions of animals annually for its own perverse consumption. We are the only species that believes war is peace, and we are the only species that systematically destroys its own habitat without a second thought. In our separation madness, omnicide is the only outcome we seek whether we choose to acknowledge this or not. Not only have we given our minds away to a pandemic of fear, but we have also given our bodies and freedoms away to the control measures that supposedly keep us safe. But from what? At what cost to our sanity and humanity do we want to live in a world of fear? Are we so afraid of the story of illness and death that we are willing to sacrifice life? <clears throat> Is further separation the only answer we are willing to entertain for solving the problems already created by our separation madness? Life does not thrive in isolation. This is not a recipe for a life-affirming future. Is this the world we want to live in? How can we possibly love life when we live in such terror of death? As long as we accept the oppressive external thoughts that have been imposed upon us, we will never activate the expansive mind to receive and experience any thoughts other than those that support the prevailing narrative. <clears throat> it's very easy to be genius these days. We need only to think for ourselves from the inside out. The corporate media, medical systems, and governments are dangerous distractions from sourcing the deeper truths that free us from it all. The real killers in this ludicrous pandemic are the silenced killers, lost livelihoods, elevated anxiety, depression, domestic abuse, mental illness, loneliness, isolation, alcoholism, drug abuse, suicide, polarization, division, and the total absence of critical thought. <clears throat> Locking down, social distancing, isolation, sanitizing, masking, and vaccinating will never bring us closer to ourselves or each other. Our true nature is one of wholeness through mental, emotional, physical health, unity, and connection. Fear is the only virus. Love is the only cure. And I was going to wrap it up here, but uh, this is just too good. I'm going to read, uh, I guess, one more section. We're going to read the invisible elephant that has outgrown the room. <clears throat> I believe the reason that most people are so reactive to the prevailing narrative including intelligent people who would normally see with more clarity is because it triggers the separate self's ego, existential fear of death. The global pa COVID pandemic narrative is by far the most elaborate story ever created for the greatest human experiment ever attempted in history. 
by aggravating the primal connection to corporeal existence, few are exempt from the psychological fear this alarm instills. One must be connected to the infinite divine truth of what they are to feel beyond the fear and to see with inner clarity the massive lie we are all, all now living within. It is only with this deep self-connection that we can see beyond the story into absolute truth that love Oneness is not only what we are, it is the foundation of our humanity. When this core truth is stripped away, we are dehumanized. The powerful alliance of mainstream science, technology, media, and government has demoralized the global masses into subservient compliance. Built on the foundation of separation through scarcity, fear, and oppression, these institutions authoritatively command the attention that destroys any capacity for autonomous thought. Mainstream science distances us from our inner knowing and prevents us from facing into the more expansive truth that lives within. It denatures us through the separation of flesh from spirit. When we look at the team of players perpetuating this dysfunctional reality, clarity becomes evident. Mainstream scientific thought is the denial of mystery to create certainty in an uncertain, ever-changing world. It is the denial of our inherent birthright of oneness to sustain the deluded belief in our finite corporeal superiority. superiority. Advanced technology without advanced consciousness does not create advancement. It creates further distance, distancing that inevitably leads to demise. We need only look at the outcome of stories we have been told about advanced technological civilizations throughout history to see where we are headed. The media perpetuates the prevailing narrative through its incessant barrage of repetitive messaging. It feeds supportive narratives to the gluttonous, addictive nature of a separated mind trapped in fear. Governments lay down the laws, no matter how insane they may be. Questioning is now punished in ever-increasing measures. With a compliant collective bowing at its mercy, this unholy alliance is a recipe for nothing less than omnicide. The planet will thank us in the end, however. Guys, this is just too good to stop. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm going to plunge ahead into one more chapter. <clears throat> Distraction from bigger issues. <clears throat> No matter how backwoods or isolated the places and spaces I go, there is not a single place exempt from the fallout of this madness. In the trees, on the ground, in the water, the pale blue evidence of insanity. Masks are everywhere. They have become the latest form of pervasive litter to infect the decade of demise, the cigarette butts of the 2020s. 
while I have no interest in vaccine debates in any capacity, I also have no qualms about expressing my dismay over its creation and especially the heavy-handedness in which it is being enforced and implemented. <clears throat> I got to, uh, and, and, and just for the sake of uh, not having uh, this video and uh, possibly this channel yanked down, I got to skip over. I would, uh, you, you have to go on the link here to read this uh, uh, long quote from Israeli rabbi Chananya Weissman, uh, where she quotes from his recent blog post when Chananya Weissman lays it out, but if I were to read one of the best quotes I have ever read about the corona panic, there is no way that this video and possibly my channel would survive. You'll have to go read it yourself. Back to Deb. <clears throat> While the world focuses on the delusion of recovery, from the devastating mental, emotional, and economic fallout produced by the pandemic narrative, we must remember that there is no solution or vaccine for the existential threat of biosphere collapse. Not only is it, it outpacing every other threat of human and societal collapse on the planet, but it is also a far more serious threat than anything we can conceive. Even in our insanity, we cannot survive on an uninhabitable planet. Let's also not delude ourselves into believing that anything will ever be normal again. What is a return to normal anyway? It's not like we weren't wearing masks and isolating ourselves before the declaration of COVID. It was just not something that we thought about behind our fears of vulnerability and the false personas we presented to others. We were masked and isolated long before the word COVID entered our vocabulary. Let's face it, our global civilization has been comatose far too long. We cannot breathe life into what was already dead. No matter what plays out, the world will never be the same. A recent group email exchange, uh, which I guess I'm kind of the one who started this email exchange. If anybody listening to this wants me to include uh, their uh, email address into our little uh, corona panic email group, just send me a note to Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com and I will get you on our emailing list. A recent group email exchange led to this potent offering from one of the members of this small group, and with great trepidation, she is getting ready to quote Mark J. Of course, it was Mark J who had my channel yanked for one week. Let's see if Mark can get my channel ripped down again. Take it away, Mark J. Quote, Apart from the human-caused destruction of climate systems, there is not anything to fear in this once beautiful world except the abject stupidity of a species that is so insane that it manufactures needles with which to inject poisons into already poisoned bodies and It is a wonder that we can even feed ourselves 
and we may yet be crawling around on all fours looking for something to eat. Thank you, Mark J. Back to Deb to finish out this. COVID is ugly, not because of the story we have been told about illness and death, but because of what we have become and how we have chosen to act toward each other in the face of it. COVID has shown a spotlight on our omnicidal ways, on our separation madness. The collective gaze is so finely tuned to look outward, distant, distracting itself with the dramas it can put names to, the dramas that soil the psyche and prevent it from seeing, feeling into something much greater. We have always had so much potential, but when wedded to illusion, potential disappears. And that goes on from there, but uh, I really need to uh, wrap this up, but I will put the link to one of the best essays I have ever uh, certainly read on the Corona Panic, and you can find links to that other essay that I was not about to read here. That's also one of the most spot-on essays, but uh, amen, Sister Deb Ozarka. You go, girl. And uh, there is nothing I can add except get out there and enjoy the mass illusion while you still can. And with that, I'm going to get out there and enjoy this spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet with my little dog. Yes, are you ready to go enjoy the spectacular day on this planet? That's Sancho. Ponza has to say about that. Bye, guys.